got? Oak leaves that are the size of a squirrel's ears. That's when you know the morels are ready. All right, some of them. All right, so just tell us a little bit about how long you've been doing hunting morels, Joel, and um, and what you, what we're looking for. Probably about ten years, and we're looking for anything, <laughs> but the morels are usually about anywhere from a thimble size all the way up to the size of a fist and they are very recognizable because they have indentations and once we find one we will put it on film okay and then also I wanted to ask you Joel um, um, what are we what are we looking for because all the woods look the same so just tell me a little bit about what we're looking for uh, they like to be under dead elms mostly but any burned areas are good and in apple orchards I've heard is a good spot and early on sunny side of a slope and later on the northern sl slopes northern north facing slopes all right well let's go see if we can find <laughs> some we're hiking an area um, looking for um, morels uh, Joel is kind of humble he says I don't know if any of that is right of course he's already found over 10 pounds of uh, morels this season and today is the 23rd today is the 23rd of May and uh, Joel talked about the fact that when uh, you find uh, the leaves of the oak trees are about the size of a squirrel's ear. Another thing that's an indicator is when the uh, 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 when the lilacs when the lilacs are blooming. Uh, that's another indicator that the time is right. So um, look for the lilacs to start blooming, and uh, it's about the right time for looking for morels. Here's an elm that's just starting to lose its bark. And Joel said he's found more when the elms still have a little bit of bark left on them. But um, we haven't found any around this one yet. Okay, it looks like um, Joel has found our first morels. Which doesn't surprise me. Okay, so this is a, a dead elm tree right here. Bark's about half off of it. This is what Joel has spotted. I'm going to try to zoom in on it. And I right. Some scrambled eggs, the first batch. Boy, were they good. Right there. Yeah, yep, that's yeah. a nice one right there. All right. You got a bag, right? Oh, yeah. All right, you guys can pick them now. And then Dan's grabbing one right there. Do you have a bag? Oh, yeah. yeah, I've got a bag. So here are these two. I'm going to go back over here. And here's this one right here. Now, obviously, they're not easy to find. I didn't get a good shot of that other one. Where's that? At? Oh, yeah, a little one. Right there. Where? Right there. Where? Right there. And there's one right there by Joel's hand. And Super. here's one. Oh, Joel just found yeah, another one. Train that. Look at that, buried right in there. Kind of scared to keep walking that one. Yeah. yeah. Super. Go ahead and grab that one. And hold it in your hand. This one's somewhat deformed because there was a stick on it and it caused it to bend as it grew. Well, it's $16 a pound. There's 16 
mushrooms approximately in a pound, so they're a dollar bill. Did you? It's like finding a dollar bill. Yeah, I want to catch him. Where'd you find him? Oh, look at him now. Right down there where his hands are. Super. Thank you. All right, so, how so big were the ones when they were here's one I spotted. Dan's going to pick it because I'm not. How, what was like the average size of the ones? All right, go for it, Dan. Go ahead and pick that one. Oh, they were small. They were um, about the, from the size of your thumb. The biggest was probably about like the one. What did you just pick there? Yeah, that, the bigger ones are about that size. Right, right, right. This is where the second one is. Oh yeah, I see. There's one right there. Hiding. So, Alright, go for it, man. I would think there'd be more. You know, yeah, you know if you like... see one that you'd see a dozen. Maybe we'd get spoiled from year to year. Right. That's We're in an area. About one of my first fishing outings, the one with John, where they were all like over 12 inches and stuff like that. So <laughs> much, he's like, "Yeah, you just go." <laughs> yeah. When my brother fished with me. We were on big springs. The stream you could jump across it. Oh, okay. You know, the first time he went trout fishing is down in southeast Minnesota. About the second cast, he got an 18-inch trout. No I way. I couldn't believe it. He gets it up on his shorts, just flopping around. And he probably didn't even, he was just like, oh, cool. Yeah. Got a trout. No, I'm going to get a shot of these. Okay. I might be sick. So in this, in this place, we just picked up, uh, where we just found about five. Now, I know the one was over in this area. Right there. Oh, there it is, right there. That's really pretty small. And, the other and then there's two, there. there's two or three nice ones over here. Here's one here. Oh, you saw this one, but there's two nice big ones over here somewhere, right over there. Yeah. So grab this one. Grab that one, bro. I'll, I'll just get a, maybe a half a dozen from you or Dan oh, when we're all sitting done. There's one right there. There's a couple right there. And when you get them on the ground, There's a lot of um, dead elm here, as you can see. So squirrels do eat them? I don't know, but I'm guessing they do. Something do. Yeah. Interesting. And I just spotted one, I think. You're going to see. I did. So I actually get to take, I actually get to take some mushroom home with me. I've uh, found five and filmed. So. One. Yeah, that's a nice one, yeah. So how many of those would it take to make a pound, Joel? Uh, probably about 16 of them, the yeah. average size. Uh, what do you do again for, uh, for keeping them over the winter, Joel? Uh, you slice them in halves or quarters and then put them on a window screen or anything to dry them out in full sun. And once they're completely hard, they'll shrivel down to an amazingly small size, but they're very potent. And then when you want to reuse them, you rehydrate them in water and then just cook with them. You rehydrate them in cold water? Uh, usually warm water. They, they okay. set, tend to swell up better. Okay. So, um, we were talking about the value on the market. Uh, wholesale, the um, morels go for about $16 a pound. Um, but on the retail market, they're anywhere from, well, currently $38 and a pound. And uh, Joel has seen them. 
Joel has seen them up over uh, or around fifty dollars a pound in the city. So high-end restaurants will purchase them. Of course, <laughs> I never find enough to ever sell, and I like eating them too much. So I just act like I'm at a high-end restaurant. You're such a class, high-class person. Yeah, you gotta <laughs> eat them. I am a high class person. I gotta have. I have. Fifty dollars. I have. I have very high tastes. So he's the hoity one. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna have trout, uh, brown trout, and morels. I think maybe for dinner tonight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, no nine. What else? There's at least nine of them. I might be sitting on several. Yeah. Man, yeah. Here, I'm gonna have you go ahead and pick them there. And so we found nine small ones right here. Something ate. It was the biggest oh, one. Dude. What'd you do? I, I, my, you stepped I was, on one. I was, yeah, I was, uh, I was looking around. I was like, man, they're thick over here, so I probably am stepping on one. And one of the biggest ones out of the bunch. <laughs> well, if you're gonna cook them, that doesn't matter unless you really smushed it. Here's another bunch right here. See? Oh, there's some right here. There's three or four okay, right in there. Really These are nice ones there. Those are beauties. Mm -hmm. Those are really nice. And I bet if we jump the other side of this fence, oh, wow. here's some more that somebody picked. You yeah. guys just sort of cleared away some brush. And... <laughs> Super. You see any? Because they walked all the way along there. I wonder. Here's one. Oh, there's one right there. Yeah. Wow, look at that handful. That's awesome. In one little 10 foot by 10 foot spot or less. And then there's another, another handful over that was already been picked over by his, his bag. Right there. Oh, God. So now, I'm gonna have to go to the other side. The, I'm gonna have to go to the other side of the tree and see if I can find a few, so. That was. Oh yeah, we have yeah. So um, Dan is now in the bushes. He's uh, he had to crawl into the thicket here to get some. I just found some right here. There's two nice ones right here. This one got stepped on by somebody. He's one looks like. The Boy, that's some tunneling to get after them. Yeah, I want to eat good. I think these were stepped on by a previous uh, morel hunter. All right, so here we are. We just came down the gravel road, and Joel over here just spotted from the window those three morels right there. Six of them. There were six total, but those are the ones that were kind of sticking out. And I'm gonna Dan's gonna pick them up there. Go ahead and get them there. Acting like a monkey. All right, those these are very good ones. And then there's three to your left. Really? Yeah, you're not even picking the ones that I we're we're right, looking at. Right in front of your foot. Right in front of your foot. There's three. Your oh, other foot. Oh my goodness! Yeah, those are the big. 